Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. As you can see today, I'm actually out on location and I am with Kaziah. Hello, Kaziah. Hi, Richard. I am in an amazing granary, an old farm granary here in rural Hampshire, in the middle of nowhere. It really does feel mm. like that. And today I'm with Kaziah because I want to explore uh, quite a passionate subject for myself and of course it's going to be passionate for you um, about the, the disappearing of the rural skills and artisan skills that um, are so integral and important to life and to uh, accomplishment and um, all those sort of things that makes living interesting and is slowly being replaced by the, the corporate industries with their AI, automation, machinery, one size fits all. And that individuality that you get from doing things with your hands and being creative. So um, thank you so much for joining me um, or inviting me here and letting <laughs> me um, be here. So thank you. You, you, are you a stone carver? Yeah, principally? I, I would call myself a sculptor, a sculptor. and a creative a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Do you know the other part of that quote? No, go on. Oftentimes better than master of one. Ah. Uh -huh. um, so that, that's, that's where I'm at the moment because I think I've spent quite a long time feeling a little bit like uh, it's a shame I can't present myself as I am the one that just does stone carving or just does the painting right. or flowers or, or watercolours or the horses. And um, I, because I, I, my craft is creativity. So I'm an educator, I teach it as well as work in creativity. And I absolutely love the versatility of it. And isn't it interesting in this world at the moment, you have to be in one niche. Yeah, it People guess, like you, like they like, as you say, to say, this is what you are and that's it. I, I again, I saw that as a negative thing. Mm. I, I like, like I'd failed to meet that target. But when I realized the, the rest of that quote, and I think I'm not the only one, there's quite a lot of people in this camp who actually enjoy more than one skill and the versatility. There's versatility can transfer yes. um, across. What, creative thinking can even transfer into sort of business skills and problem solving. Um, I, I yeah. totally agree. But when you when you sort of go down into one type of one yeah. skill only, and there's yeah. so many related things, I mean, you see that in the medical profession in which, um, or science in general, where they... If ever more we, people are just focused in on one tiny little area and the rest of yeah. science which might have ref yeah. relevance to that is almost forgotten so um i think that's so that's so good to be jack of all master of yeah I, st I still would love to get to the point where i am just daily carving or daily making metal sculptures so m my dream is to get to a point where i'm making metal sculptures um, my partner's a, a blacksmith and, right um, actually wish he could be here and yeah and perhaps in the future we'll <laughs> we'll interview him absolutely <laughs> now then i know that you see this is what's so uh, important i think at this at this stage in which so many of those vital yeah. skills that have been around for centuries yeah. you know that we've grown up and we've learned and, and the abilities that we've had with our hands in the last 150 odd years with thanks to the industrial revolution has been taken away and people are not having the opportunity to learn that and even make the decision whether they want to do it or not yeah i think it's very easy to dismiss crafts in fact when i was at art school crafts were looked down upon a little bit actually were they and it's interesting it's taken me a while to really see where i'm at with that because um i feel the people who do work day in day out with tools and mis making mistakes going through processes and sort of building skill and wisdom i feel they've got so much to offer they also seem to be really calm this is the, the, the right. bit i uh, there's something about crafts people i'm really drawn to um, yeah, I've noticed it in the stonemasons I hang out with as well. They're just sort of really happy, calm people to be around. So there's something in it. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, the other thing is, of course, um, modernity is keeping us yeah. forever faster and faster. We've got, and our expectations are have things very rapidly. Yeah. And, uh, and the whole, you know, there is a, 
a recognised movement now of slowing down, mm. slowing slow vegetables, you know, eating slowly, but uh, doing things slowly and being calm. And we're all told that we're all too stressed and this, that and the other. But in actual fact, the workplace is making us more stressed. Whereas when you read old books or you visit, you know, people like blacksmiths, you can't rush True. that. And then I'm sure it's the same with sculpting. You can't sort of rush a sculpture. Yeah. It has to come about in its own time. You need to step in the moment. And that's where I think the calm kicks in. So I, I teach stone carving. And even though I'm not a master stonemason, I absolutely love, once I've learned a passion and a skill, I absolutely love finding ways to enable others to access those skills. I, I just absolutely enjoy giving permission to anyone to step in and learn these skills and not feel they've got to train for years or pay yes. a fortune um, and you don't need to have a beard and be a bloke you can <laughs> be a young girl and want to be a stonemason right. or, or a blacksmith it's okay yeah so we can we, it's accessible but I think the world has made well there's lots of barriers actually we can talk about yes. <laughs> many of those I mean, well, one of the things that when we arrived and we were just sort of generally talking yeah. we just arrived and the, 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 the lovely Julia was with me and uh, looking after your wonderful dog uh, instantly just off camera, um, was the fact that there, there's this feeling that everything's got to be perfect. Aye. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Because there's nothing, I think perfection is, it, it's a misnomer really, because yeah. none of us are perfect. You know, we have blemishes, we have things wrong with us, which makes us unique. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, I'll start with when I, I teach the stone carving mainly to adults. So when they walk in the room, they've often had ex quite um, distinguished careers, you know, right. all sorts of, you know, from solicitors to working in the oil industry. And, you know, actually, I would love to open up and work with more diverse people. But we're having mostly retired people who've actually had successful careers, but have craved that kind of creativity. But they still walk in as adults with negative thinking, um, some more than others. And perhaps that we've all learned as adults to mask it more, or as young people, the dialogue around sort of mental well-being has, has opened up. Yes. So they're more, going, they're more likely to tell me, oh, you know, I've got ADHD, and, 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 and they've got strategies. But adults have the negative thinking, it's very obvious. So you, you, know, you present them with a, a blank, you know, just, just a nice clean, block and, and ask them to carve into it and they want it to be perfect and yes. they're saying they're going to be awful and 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 the first thing you do is unpick the negative thinking and just get them to relax into it um and 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 the more they get engrossed in the problem solving um the more they step into the moment and the more they start laughing and by the end of the day they're always covered in dust and big smiles <laughs> and even if the thing they've made really wonky they just are so proud of it. Yes. They've engaged with, they've realised that their wrist is aching, um, that, that perhaps they faffed a little bit too much at the beginning. The, the no matter how many times I said, you've really got to just go beyond the surface drawing and take away chunks in order for the design to pop out. They're frightened. They're frightened of making a mistake. Right. And risk comes with creativity and also in, in the realm of creativity, it's a risk that can pay off you, you're going to learn if it goes wrong yes and that so that's a, a, it's just a learning opportunity if it goes wrong and then adapt yes so it's a wonderful arena where you can take risks um and and, and mistakes are really just learning opportunities so oh so, yeah. Abs yeah no definitely <laughs> definitely i mean and, and that's the other thing i mean even just taking a pen and paper or a pencil and paper you, you know and you say draw a circle it's yeah. amazing how you try to draw a circle and you go actually it's not as easy as it looks. It takes a bit of practice, Very but difficult. you want to get that circle absolutely right. And um, yeah. and as you say, it's the mistakes is the journey that you're learning all the time. Because otherwise, where's the fun? If you can just do it, <laughs> da, 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 there you go, done it. Well, uh, this is back to the problem of machines. So um, it, it, there's a tendency for wanting the convenience and the cheap factor. So um, we have the technology now, you know, you, can, you, you don't have to be a trained artist to make a metal sculpture. You can have an idea. It gets put in um, into CAD programs. I've never been trained in any of this, so it's still um, a bit alien to me. But I think I'm going to remain on the other side and, and only just stick to the, 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 the more of the, the long journey of learning how to work with tools. Because I don't think at the end of the day, I want to be part of 
the world, yes, it's good for income, but if you're just getting the computer to transfer the image on a larger scale, and then there's a machine that's kind of laser cutting it out, and then it just gets well together, it's a formula, and boom, you've got a nice public sculpture. Okay, it's nice, but there's something deep missing. And, and if you go back before that technology to the Rodans and all the yeah. wonderful sort of public sculptures, uh, yes, they had assistance, but there's a bit you get feeling. You stand in front of some of those sculptures and um, there's heart, there's, there's hard work and tears and sweat and Absolutely. blood. And, and you get a resonance and, and perhaps then a story, something can do, that's yes. possibly the purpose of creativity or art to And when you see, if you people. go into, sort of, even if you go into your rural churches, yeah. you know, unknown artists, unknown stone carvers and wood uh, carvers or all the carpenters have, have done things. They're, they're not, Famous, they haven't got names, but their skills, you know, they, oh, they've amazing. created such amazing things. And, and then, yeah. you know, they go back to the missus at the end of the day or whatever and eat and, and it's just part of life. But, um, but, oh, this, is, but <laughs> this is so missing, that sense of achievement, that joy, that yeah. being in the moment that you said. It's yeah. people are no longer really doing something which just takes everything away. Yeah. Other than that focus. And also, there's the, the story that we're all part of. You know, there, there would, wouldn't have been a village or a town without a blacksmith. You know, that yeah. sound, that dong, dong. And I, when you say blacksmith, it's not just a farrier. You know, it's been mm. sort of changed now. So people instantly think, oh, just shoeing horses. But no, the blacksmith was everything. They were the celebrant. They would do hand fasting. The, the, the fire was where they, people would come and be warm. Yes. Uh, and right, yes. they, they would often be seen as wise people. Because people used to run up to uh, Gretna Green, didn't they? And they would go to a blacksmith to get married. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that just goes to show you how multifaceted they are. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, I think society would, as we know it, would not exist if it was not for the people going, oh my gosh, look what happens when fire meets metal rock and just the, the, the years and years it would have taken to develop those skills and how it shifted and built cultures and civilizations, you know, massive turning points. So there wouldn't have been any form, no matter how small or big, of culture without the metal worker. Mm. But now, modern day, how many times do you drive past the old forge and it's a uh, Airbnb or a yeah, hub, or a cafe, or or something like that. Hairdressers, I've seen one, and it's. We, and my partner is looking for an affordable place, and and it's honestly it's it's, it's gutting because you, you drive past and you're like, this is all we need, just the old, an yeah. old building, and we can just get on with our work, and everything is just the price of everything is just flipped, the value of everything feels like it's upside down, it, so so this is kind of thing. I, I think the time people put into these skills. Um, and the wisdom they gain from it and what they can pass on to other people. The, it's not just about being able to fix things or make things or teach. It's just it's a whole way of life that I think many people would benefit from yes. taking on. But um, it's getting to a point where it, it's almost inaffordable to live like this in this modern day. Yes. Uh, we, 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 I mean, from my point of view and the viewers will know, from the sort of various things that we discuss on the channel, how um, we are being funneled into one particular type of lifestyle. And I feel that um, the age that I am comes from a very much an analog world, but the next generation who are being so influenced by television, by mainstream media, by the commercial everything, and the instant gratification, yeah. you want something, you just go in and these big, big shops and you, you know, you go to places like, well, I don't really want to name brands as such, but some of these places that just bring in stuff from say China, mass produced, and you can set up your home instantly. And then you go around your mate's house and it's almost identical with the same cheap and, and nasty slapped together stuff in a factory. And then you go around somebody else's house and they've got real things. <laughs> And suddenly it's, that's really, suddenly becomes interesting. Yeah. You know, they've got an artifact. He says, oh yes, my uncle made that. Bloody hell, he made it? Yeah. What, with his own hands? Yeah. And I just worry that the next generation are not seeing it. Now, you, you, as you said, you're teaching 
a lot of retired people, but you do teach. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned that because that's the other learning extreme for me. Um, but I mainly teach teenagers. They come here every Friday and they're the ones that have fallen out of the school system or have had a that's, re that's really interesting. Yeah. They've fallen out of the school system. Yes, yeah, yeah. So creativity and, and, has been dropped from schools. And I bet they're thriving. Yeah, well, I, I hope so. Um, they relax. This is the key thing. So the, the most common email I get from parents is that the child suffers from immense anxiety. They're struggling to even get them out of the room. Um, they've had awful experiences and they list all the problems and they're a bit worried about coming here. And usually uh, they walk in and they relax, partly the building architecture does have an influence. That certainly does. <laughs> um, and I'm going to hope that my teaching style has an influence too, as I'm in... sure it does. Um, but the approach that I adopt, and it is other people adopt this too, it's not un unique to me, is you meet them where they're at. You don't w want to put them in a position where they're being compared. And unfortunately, the curriculum, and I don't follow the curriculum, does a thing where it's sort of rushed. So I don't actually envy art teachers in that system. They, they're, they're doing their best. And I have done um, work in schools and experienced how uncomfortable it is when actually you want, you want to do better for your students. Mm. So for me, this is the solution, setting up almost um, an, an alternative environment where creativity can thrive, where actually we're not all doing the same thing. I'm offering them quite a range of choices. I'm doing some demos, but so if somebody wants to use the press, the etching press over there, they can, or lino. Uh, or if they want to do spray painting outside, if they want to just do illustrations, they can. Or if, we, if they want to do charcoal, or, you know, so I, I give them dialogue and ask them what they want and make sure they then get to a point where they're making creative decisions themselves. But when they first walk in, um, I, I really want to talk to them about making mistakes and embracing art as something where you are literally just expressing yourself and um, relaxing into it and using it as a voice to, for some people, maybe to talk about the actual uh, mental health issues that they've suffered, because that's their block and that's why, mm. why it stopped them from going to school. And well, okay, rather than shut down, let art be your mouthpiece, yes. you know, use it to help But in many ways, I mean, it's, uh, knowing what I know and, and what a lot of people now feel about the school and the curriculum, and you've sort of hinted on it there, in many ways, these guys are the lucky ones because they're not going through that very strict uh, government um, mandated sort of timetable of, uh, of bits that they need to do. Yeah. You're, you're offering them a freedom and, and something they don't get in school is that creative freedom. There's a lot of so much freedom for some that's overwhelming, but you sort of hopefully train them to get used to it and, and, and then trust themselves in that yeah. process. And, and I get them through the art GCSE, so it's not just art in a vacuum, um, but it comes under the umbrella of home education, which seems to be rising. And I know that's something that isn't um, supported because there's absolutely zero funding for yeah. but home you're education. Right. I mean, you're absolutely right. It is, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are beginning to think, it's hang on. It's getting more and more common. Why should I be giving my children to people who I don't know their philosophy, I don't understand their... their um, the, the things that I don't know them and yeah. you're, you're, so much of your child is spending time in in that relationship yeah I see them thrive actually they they, they hand pick and the timing and the courses they do and they they tend to develop quite a lovely confidence um and I sort of wish that I'd had that education I just went yes. to a normal school yeah well I did, yeah. <laughs> I did as well <laughs> but somehow we escaped it yeah yeah I just sort of realized I just got to get on with it and just you know yeah be quiet get in <laughs> get 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 to the next bit yeah uh, my sons also but um what i think was the saving bit for my sons is they did dance outside of school so that became their their voice their right. expression the thing that gave them confidence and there was their life and still is so now yes. they're in their 20s and that's their life school oh, didn't do that <laughs> i know that um you said something there which was interesting about kids doing stuff outside activities yeah. and some parents really push that to the extreme don't they so um i know um a friend of a friend whose children um this is going back some years but they were so determined that their children would be proper children mm -hmm. so that after they've done their school they would go off and do ballet and then they would do riding and they would do this and they would do that yeah. so they never had any time to themselves because they kept getting shoved by the sure. parents into these yeah. things 
uh, very expensive at the same time. But the, chi- the, the poor children, and they rebelled against their parents, and, and it was a disaster, really, huh. um, which, was, which was a shame. Now, you know, they happened to be, and I'm going to use a sweeping statement here, which I hope isn't offensive, but they were very middle class with a bit of money, and, and I think the parents just thought they were doing the right thing. But they, they just... They can be setting the kids up for sort of a bit of a breakdown later, um, not knowing what to do when you're left to your own devices, yeah. perhaps. I don't know, I can't speak for every, every the, you know, other setups. Um, I can notice that the parents who choose home education, you, you need the time, the dedication. Mm. And there's so many parents who want to, but just can't. And I really wish there was more support, actually, for the struggling parents. So that's something I'm going to look into to try and create bursaries for struggling parents so more people can sacrifice their time for taking their kid out for a day to just do what they want um, and then back that up with doing science or um, maths and English, but in their own time. You you mentioned that um, there are boundaries to getting into doing all of this and there's difficulties for perhaps people like yourself who want to teach, let, let alone the people who would love to learn and, and as yet may not even know that they want to learn. I mean, that's the other thing. I think that there's right, there's a, a huge number of people who have never had the chance to experience and don't know what they're missing. And if they've discovered, you know, they discover somebody like you, they oh my God, you know, why didn't I do this 20 years ago? But the boundaries for people like you who want to do this it is increasing, isn't it? Yeah, so... I'm seeing this through my partner, but I'm but also since I've been here, um, this is a beautiful building, but I can't do metal sculpture here because obviously fire risk. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I respect that Brandon decision. <laughs> um, some 800 years heritage. Uh, so or I can't weld big dragon sculptures here, and I would love a barn, and um, there is a barn opposite, but they actually said no, and and anyway, but they, they, that's every landlord has. That you know they've got their prices, they, they, the commercial rates. Yes. Um, and for eight years, I've still desperately been, been looking for somewhere where I could make metal sculptures. To the point where I've realised I'm not the only one who's looking for a space. Um, I've got a carpenter friend who has a canoe he's made but with his hands. He's got all the tools, so many skills, but he spends all his time working in a job to pay the rent and no time to do his skills. And he's just one of many that I yes. know like this. They, they've got the skills and they can pass those on to others, but they're literally just fighting just, just to stand still. And I mean, I know you, you said you can't do metal work here for obvious reasons, as yeah, you said, sure. but this environment here for the other stuff that yeah. you do do, and, then, and you mentioned architecture is so important because it does raise your vibrations True. and gives you inspiration. And, and if you're stuck in some very utilitarian, boring, straight building, trying to be creative, it can have an effect, whereas you can yeah. be inspired in this. And and you also mentioned the trouble is these sort of, these are sought after by, unfortunately, by corporation, because it's all very quite cool to come and yeah. come to the granary and but everyone's sitting there on their laptops in a very clinical way doing whatever business they're doing, you know, web design or selling this or buying that whatever it is and 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 it seems a shame you can understand that um landowners want as much money as they can get Mm. and and that's what we're up against so um this is where we're we're saying okay there's a problem so there's the people with skills who are actually genuinely being priced out um it's not just the price of workshops which are usually around about a thousand pounds a month but then on top of that, there's your home, which is yeah. going to be around about £1,000 a month. And then there's the, the rise in, in petrol and diesel and, and, and then materials and the energy um, resources. So we've got a lot of rise when actually we're at a time where the perception of value of something made by your hands. Yes. So my partner gets this a lot. People come up to him and they say, oh, I just need this, you know, something for my garden made. And he says, well, that'll cost X amount. And they're like, yeah, but I can get that in a shop cheaper. Off you go, well, then. Off you go. go to the shop. Yeah, if but you want that if, bespoke title. <laughs> if you want something made with not just with love and by hands, but all the years of experience and just yes. the cost of even you know setting up the forge, you know lighting the forge, um, it's people are so disconnected that so. That's what as they are with food. True. You right. know, to 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 get food onto the table, right. real food, proper healthy uh, food. 
we're so used to again as you know you can go and get it get your pizza or your tv dinner or your ping food whatever it is instantly but it's it's nowhere near as good or as healthy in the case of food mm -hmm. and uh, so that's that is a problem so there's a problem and and so one of the things i've been doing is i mean i actually had the, the this i nurtured the dream i think when i was around about 11 um but it's got stronger and stronger but is to set up spaces that present affordable workshops and living spaces for artisans and food growers so land workers hands and land um and i you know i've started the past three years i've been honing it writing it uh, written a website and and actually that's how you got in touch with me through the Absolutely, website. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and preserving the preserving these crafts yeah, and the skills. The people and who work with hands and lands, the ones who really want to live sustainably, yes. softly, in in tune with um, the environment, they don't really want these modern stressful lives. They actually want to be working with their hands at a craft, growing vegetables with other like minded people and and presenting a really what, what uh, maybe a hundred years ago wasn't so uh, unusual, but no. now seems to be this. What you want, you want to live yes. uh, sustainably off grid, grow your own vegetables? How very dare you? It doesn't seem to be. Um, I mean, it shouldn't even be a problem. It should be just a, a, something that should be on offer to young people. But right now they are faced with not knowing how to afford where yes. to live. You know, my my sons are thinking they probably at some point are going to have to get a living van and. And, yeah. you know, just, just and these are the people who know that's what they want. I mean, I, my worry is that there are people now, because this is almost hidden, this type of thing, right. is that there's loads of people who, as, as I alluded to before, they, they feel an urge, but they don't know what that urge is because right. we're not exposed, you know, unless you know you're here and you can go on a course or you go to a, a, a craft fair or something and talk to someone. Unless you know that, you've probably got that urge, there's something missing from your life, but you don't know what because you're not exposed to it. It's true, so it just needs to become more commonplace, places where people can come and access skills, but not just that. Let's look after the people who can teach the skills. Yeah, absolutely, because yeah, without so those, you, 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 it's going. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um, so, and, and do you feel, you said there about you know, setting up communities, we get from running the, the YouTube channel, there is a huge shift now yeah. of people waking up to the to the dream that has almost dwindled and thinking, I don't like that sterile corporate. Work. Yeah, I've got to earn a yeah. living. I, I get that. And I've got to pay my way. I get that. But actually, there are alternatives. And it's not just hippies smoking no. weed in a commune. There's something actually valuable about using your hands, whether that's yeah. creating something or growing food, um, or being together, you know, cooking together, eating together, making things together, um, and enjoying nature and the outdoors. I think it's becoming more and more common. It's it's almost like uh, it's, it's that primal thing in people. Are, it's what our ancestors did that we we lived more in tune with nature. Um, we lived more in tune with just night and day, just just the, the rhythms and. Growing vegetables was something we would probably all lend a hand to. Yes, and not just bring the harvest in as yeah. they used to do. And yeah, the whole village community. would come out. Yeah, so, and it probably wasn't even that long ago. It's industrialization has caused many problems, and um, and and so quite often actually, it's people who've been living in the corporate world who make the change. They go, I've had enough of this, yes. and they're buying these. 1.5 million farmsteads and move into the country and learning these skills and building places but this is the thing they, they are in a position where they can afford it the people who are already sort of doing their best whether they're making hurdles or blacksmithing stone carving or in making gl glass or, or working in hedge laying we saw yeah. some beautiful hedge laying as we came down here and we thought oh yeah the people are out there doing yeah. it in the proper way yeah 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 and working with coppice and producing charcoal um all these people and, and growing vegetables working with animals w w there needs to be something intervening quite soon to make sure they can afford land yes. th this is like the key part because if we just step back and do nothing the people who are ready actually to, to just literally help people learn those skills 
are just going to be left to struggle and, and, and disappear. One, yeah, one by one, we're going to lose them. And I already know people who are having too much stress um, and sort of, sort of mental breakdowns because they're, they've been forced just to get normal jobs. And um, it, it shouldn't be rocket science to actually create a model of affordable live work units yeah. that aren't great big uh, new development houses. No, no, exactly. And 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 this idea that you have to have this one one um, house fits everything, you know, this yeah. one type of living and you see them with the new builds and they're, they're all very uh, as if everybody has chosen. That's how we want to live. Yeah. But many people are quite happy to live in a small home with very basics to, to wake up, to see the sun, yeah. be in listen nature, to listen to the yeah. birds and, and not be pushed ever more towards compact cities, high rise flats and and pseudo nature. Yeah. Um, Julia and I happen to be in Milton Keynes, which is a, a, a real 15 minute city if ever you wanted to see one. And it's all high rise. People are working in the corporate businesses there. They're living in these tiny little flats on 10 stories high. They had a square where people were meeting and, right. and, and, and able to buy all the big commercial brand food. And in the middle of the square is a fountain and around the fountain was AstroTurf. Right. And, you, and it just kind of, it was the AstroTurf that just was the straw that broke the back. You, know, you could almost tolerate everything. The angular buildings, the steel and glass and the very sort of close fitting and the the one type of tree, the London plane, that was the one tree that was lining wow. all the um, avenues. And then AstroTurf, I just, it just got my hackles up and you go, how do people live like that? Yeah, it's um, still realising, well, it's still thinking that insects are bad, you know, yeah, <laughs> we're creating yeah. environment, environments where insects aren't thriving. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a big problem. and. I'm almost speechless actually on that one. I, I, I know. <laughs> and, and and then when we came here, you know, we'd driven across the countryside, you see all the yeah. beautiful farmland, the greenery and everything. Everything's looking, despite the, the overcast weathers and stuff, yeah. everything's looking very lush uh, and bountiful. And we're just coming towards the end of spring into summer. And, um, and then you saw this beautiful farm in this location and you just go, this is how people used to live. Yeah albeit okay and i know people they always say this yeah but they were poor and they didn't have a lot of money and and it was but they yeah rich in other ways but maybe. absolutely yeah <laughs> and if we can match the advantages of the modern day so you can get to places yeah. and, and all of that with some of the old we would have a very wonderful life and actually this is the thing um I think people are more connected to their hearts when they live like this, simply using their hands, working together, collaboration. Because when, you, I, mean, the, 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 I think there's even scientific experiments to make, to, to study people who um, do breathing into their heart and sort of meditation. But I see it through craft. So I've had some people when they do stone carving, um, oh, it's better than mindfulness because all the sort of worries go away, but the calm settles in. Um, but it, it, people become, when you become heart-based, the way you relate to other people shifts and you're more likely to be in a sort of slightly higher, am I, can I use the word vibration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use <laughs> um, it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you, you, the way you communicate is going to be kinder. Yes. And compassion is going to be in you and you're going to actually speak compassionately to other people and you're going to relate to the animals, the people, nature, everything around you with compassion if you're in your heart. I would yeah. love to see a point before it we write. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Because we are living beings. Yeah. That's the thing. We aren't these, these um, very sterile corporate sort of dead entities that, yeah. that's fairly lifeless and soulless. We're, we're, we have a soul. Yeah. And we're expressing us. And, and isn't that what life's about? Uh, and, and I know creativity gets pushed. Oh, yeah. You know, so as, as the you know, mental well-being, oh, yeah, it's just a nice little extra thing or being creative, just a nice extra thing. But I actually think bring it back to the centre. I think it might be the thing that shifts 
culture. It, it, it's the meaning of life. <laughs> I think so. You, you I know, really do. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> it, it is the meaning of life. And um, and I think people are slowly beginning yeah. to, I mean, they've had to go right to the edge where life is drab, it's repetitive. They get up, they go to work, they get on the commute for two hours. They do this soulless job for, and somebody else is making the profit from it. And then they come home and they're so exhausted. They watch the telly, Netflix or whatever. And and then, you know, they go to bed and the hamster wheel starts again. Yeah. And coming on a course with somebody like you, doing something very different, feeling the stone, the, the inks, the paint, building something. It, it, that's, that is what life is. And if we can make it easier for people to build enterprises in the creative industries that aren't just computer based, I think will actually be offering something really positive to the next generation. I think that for me, that's the lifeline and that's the passion. That's what myself and my partner are dedicated to, but loads of people I know. Making sure we build something that's a legacy we can hand on, um, that ideally is a model that other people are like, yeah, we need this in this town and, and, and just it just replicated. It's just a place where people nurture um, skill sharing, resource sharing and um, enterprise through creativity yeah. so you don't feel you have to get a job you hate in order to afford a some time to do a thing that's a hobby you can do it that way it, it, yeah, everyone's got to find their own way but um you can build an income um or share you can create enterprise if if we promote culture and creativity more but and we've we all learned through covid that creativity kind of helped Get people going. Get, get people going. I think it's more than something we just need to just shimmy to the sides. I think it needs to come back to the centre. You mentioned your website uh, oh. at the beginning. What What is the website? Um, so the one I've written recently, it's um, ogumvillages.com. So it stands for Off Grid Artisans and Makers. So you can see the the, the philosophy there and get in touch. And that. I'll put the link in the description. I mean, I'm sure we could just carry on talking oh, and great. talking about so many <laughs> different things. But do get in touch and you run courses. Can anybody come along to the yeah, courses? Yeah, it's best to email and say, actually, um, there's a group of us. We want to come or or just say, look, you haven't got any advertiser at the moment, but I, I want to come and, yeah. and I'll, I'll arrange a date around you because uh, like most artists, I'm not very good at admin, um, promoting right, myself, <laughs> uh, putting things on a website. Just get in touch and, yeah. and then, then we can build it. And, and go yeah. from there. And the other thing is anyone who wants to live um, in... Some, something that we're calling an artisan and maker's village. If they could get in touch, um, or if someone has land that they want to put forward for it, or um, someone actually wants to help fund it, because we're really at that stage. We've got a few investors and people who want to share that life and, and live with us, but it's, you know, we'd have to get a big loan to make it yes. happen, and it's, it's terrifying. Because you mentioned these people in the corporate world, yeah. and, and they're sort of beginning to realise, actually, perhaps what I've been doing for the last 50 years is not quite me, and... And they may have got some money and they may want to invest in or, or help. And then come and, and stay And rather on site. than just spend it on themselves in a very yeah. selfish way, they could get more out of it yeah. by making land available or a workshop or sure. tools or anything and being part of a community. Yeah, yeah, they're welcome to come and stay. And, and you know, you could have artist residentials where you're there for a, you know, a few months and learning a bit of glass making, stone making, clay work and growing vegetables. You know, make your own tools. Wouldn't it be nice to make your own tools and yeah. then carve with your own tools? Ah, you know? <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, it's endless. So there yeah. we are, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, letting us come to the granary here and to see what you do and, and have a look around. It's, uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. And to share um, the, uh, the conversation um, and, and, and highlight just how important working again back in in the way that nature intended us in many yeah. ways yeah it connects us to this yeah so i'll be back with more wonderful interviews and monologues and all the rest of it but uh, for the moment from uh, deep in hampshire in from the granary thanks for watching bye bye